Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 26th of January. India exhibits diversity, military might at Grand Republic Day Parade. New Delhi rejects Pakistan's claim of involvement in targeted killings, calls it a malicious propaganda. And US express concern over Sri Lanka's controversial internet regulation law. And now for all the details. India on Friday marked its 75th Republic Day by showcasing its military and cultural diversity in a colourful parade in New Delhi with French President Emmanuel Macron gracing the occasion as the chief guest. Take a look. India on Thursday marked its 75th Republic Day with a military parade and display of cultural diversity as President Draupadi Murmu led the celebrations in capital New Delhi, while French President Emmanuel Macron attended as a chief guest. The parade displayed the country's military prowess, tradition and culture at Kartavipat, an elegant lawn bordered boulevard that connects the presidential place to the India Gate. Accompanied by marching bands, troops from India's military and paramilitary marched in perfect synchronization. 120 soldiers from the French armed forces along with one multi-role tanker transport aircraft and two Rafale fighter jets of the French Air and Space Force also participated after Indian troops and aircraft paraded for the 2023 Bastille Day in Paris. The only serving active host cavalry regiment in the world, the 61st Cavalry T-90 Bhishma tank, Nag missile system, infantry Swati and drone jammer system were some of the many weaponries displayed during the parade apart from other defence attachments. Several thousand people watched the parade from seats around Kartavipat, while the event was televised to millions more at home. One of the main attractions of the annual parade was the flypast of Indian Air Force aircrafts showcasing aerobatic skills. Meanwhile, as part of the celebrations, beating retreat ceremony was also observed at the Atari Vaga border, the road check post between India and Pakistan in northern Punjab state. The ceremony is not only a daily drill performed by the border security force and the Pakistan rangers, but it has also emerged as a major tourist attraction on both sides of the Radcliffe line. India won independence from British rule on August 15, 1947, but it was not until January 26, 1950 that the nation declared itself a sovereign republic state with the adoption of its constitution. The drill at the border signifies the rivalry, brotherhood and cooperation between India and Pakistan. The giant fog layer over North India, which has persisted for over a month now, has left people's bodies numb. People in Lucknow city on Friday were seen sitting around fire to cope with the cold weather. Residents complained that thick fog has hindered their morning commutes and disrupted their travel plans. Poor visibility has also caused widespread chaos this week with several trains out of New Delhi delayed or cancelled. The Indian Meteorological Department has forecast dense to very dense fog to continue in the upcoming days, with minimum temperatures ranging between 3 and 5 degrees Celsius in some areas of northern India. Soon after Pakistan said that it had credible evidence linking Indian agents to the killings of two Pakistani citizens on Pakistani soil, New Delhi on Thursday strongly rejected the claims and called it a false and malicious anti-India propaganda. Pakistan's allegations came months after both Canada and the US separately accused Indian agents of being linked to assassination attempts 
on their soil. India's external affairs ministry said Pakistan has long been known worldwide as the epicenter of terrorism, organized crime and illegal transnational activities. India has long blamed Pakistan helps terrorists mount attacks on Indian soil, a charge Islamabad denies. Bangladeshi authorities have been raising alarm over the increased numbers of missing Rohingya refugees at sea as they take risky boat journeys to reach Southeast Asia through the Bay of Bengal. Bangladesh hosts more than 1.2 million Rohingya Muslims who, over decades, escaped death and persecution in neighboring Myanmar, especially during a military crackdown in 2017. Most of them live in Cox's Bazar district, which, with the arrival of the Rohingya, became the world's largest refugee settlement. Humanitarian condition in Cox's Bazar refugee camps have been deteriorating for years and, last month, Bangladeshi authorities warned that they were reaching crisis levels amid a sharp decline in global aid for the oppressed, stateless minority. Despite awareness campaigns about the dangers of sea journeys and anti-human trafficking efforts, Rohingya in Bangladesh are losing hope in returning to their homes in Myanmar. The United States on Thursday expressed concerns over Sri Lanka's online regulation bill, a day after it passed overwhelmingly in Parliament over protests by the media, opposition and rights activists. The online safety bill allows the government to set up a commission with a wide range of powers, including ordering people and internet service providers to remove online posts deemed prohibited statements. It can also legally pursue people who publish such posts. Washington has urged Sri Lanka to prioritize transparency and ensure any legislation does not stifle the voices of its people. The government said the legislation addresses problems related to online fraud. Sri Lanka is struggling to emerge from its worst economic crisis, which hit the island nation two years ago. The country declared bankruptcy in 2022 with more than 83 billion US dollars in debt, more than half of it owed to foreign creditors. Amid Russia-Ukraine war, Nepal on Thursday called back hundreds of its nationals back to the country who were recruited by Russia in its army and also demanded the repatriation of the bodies of those who were killed during the war. Nepal's Foreign Minister Narayan Prakash Saud said more than 200 Nepali nationals have been recruited by the Russian army to fight against Ukraine and at least 14 of them have been killed so far. Saud added that Nepal has been seeking monetary compensation for the families of those who die. Nepali soldiers called Gurkhas are known for their fighting skills and have been serving the British and Indian armies following an agreement between the three countries. There is no such agreement with Russia or any other countries. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.